From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. Tennessee is a state that has long prided itself on good fiscal management. It's something that goes beyond just a balanced budget that's required by the state constitution every year. One of the people in Tennessee government that's responsible for doing all that is the Comptroller of the State, the, the, the Comptroller of the Treasury. He's Justin Wilson. He's our guest on Inside Politics. Justin, Let thank you for here. coming on the show. Now, the, the Comptroller's job was created under the Article 7, Section 3 of the Tennessee Constitution. It goes back all the way to 1835, so that's a long time. But the Constitution doesn't set out any real duties within the Constitution itself for what your responsibilities are. Is there a reason why the the founders of the, of the framers of that constitution left out any duties specifically for the job? Well, you know, I wasn't around in 1835. <laughs> I think Andrew Jackson was, was was president, and constitutions are supposed to be inherently broad. Now, the General Assembly did act in 1836. That was the year Van Buren was elected president, uh, and it did set forth the duties of the Comptroller. And the, the statute said that it was primarily what the Comptroller does today is, to, is to, to audit the standard, to report on the fina, uh, financial condition of the state, to audit state government, to check the uh, appropriateness of the uh, tax collections of local governments, exactly what, uh, very much what we do today. Now, the, the, the positions appointed by a joint vote of the General Assembly when they meet every two years for the, to, to do their organizational sessions. So every two years, do you feel like you have 132 different bosses? Well, I, I don't know about that. I, uh, I am elected by the General Assembly, uh, and, you know, I'm inherently elected by the people who elect the representatives. Uh, of course, I'm responsive to the General Assembly, as you could imagine, but uh, we it's difficult to say it's a boss-employee-employee -employee relationship because we really value our independence. Now, some states, I think, elect their comptroller by statewide vote. That's Tennessee, correct. Tennessee has very few statewide elections other than the governor himself. The uh, governor. And um, do you like the Tennessee way versus saying, saying it was a statewide position that was elected? Well, of course, if you're elected, then that's the auditor becomes a political figure who makes political decisions. And we try to stay away from that. We, we, we try to be, in our fundamental duties, apolitical. And I think that's very healthy. Looking at your own schedule, your own, I think I saw I counted more than 30 boards and commissions and different things that you do. How do you schedule all those, much less do all the work? Well, I mean, it, the it's state government continues to grow and grow, although when everybody talks about smaller government, it continues to grow. Well, actually, the number of state employees has gone down. Uh, but uh, it's a challenge because some of those boards are quite important. And, I, and, you know, we've got a staff to help me prepare for them, and scheduling is often a, a, a difficult issues. But it's a fundamental part of my duties, and we carry them out. In 180 years, there have only been 34 individuals who've served in your position. Probably the best known of that among Tennesseans would be William Bill Snodgrass, who was comptroller for 44 years, from 1955 to 1999. Uh, he did that under both political parties. One of the main office buildings downtown for the state is Correct. named in his honor. He hasn't been in office for 20 years, but is the spirit of, or, or sort of the professionalism in particular that I know he was noted for, is that still alive and well in your office today? Well, I certainly hope so, and I certainly believe so. Now, I think it's fair to say that Bill Snodgrass was one of the auditors, or uh, in our case, controller, but really auditors uh, across the country of the states that were part of the real change in the way of local government in the 60s and he was a major force in, 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 in reforming local government across the country. Now in, in looking through the your website you had a number of news releases on there about the audits that you do in other studies and, and some of them were routine that this county got a clean bill of health or this city and this sort of thing but there are more than a few on there of things where you where your studies have found irregularities and in some cases leading to uh, investigations and criminal matters uh, are you seeing more of those as you go along or are you actually finding that local government and the other things that you audit are actually reforming themselves to some degree we've had a number of local governments that i'm very proud of who found prop we found problems they've dealt with them they've corrected them and that's extraordinarily good and we've had and nothing's better than to see that 
uh, we don't have a gun, we don't have a, you know, we don't have a badge, we don't have any real enforcement power, but we do have the power of the pen. And we have noted uh, problems, and there's problems that are just not knowing better or, 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 or not understanding the very, very complex rules, and we want to help people through those. And in those cases, we've been very successful. Some people don't really want to uh, deal with that, and then we have to use the power of the pen. Now, you seek help and tips from the public uh, if they suspect fraud or waste or abuse of public money somewhere in Tennessee, and you have a, a record. Pretty, you had a record year for doing that in 2014. What does that say? Well, you know, we, it's the people's money, and we need to remember that, uh, that the money belongs to people, and our job, uh, we call ourselves sometimes the money cops, is to be sure that the money that the government takes away from you is spent the way it should. And if any citizen feels for one reason or another that there's fraud, waste, or abuse in public funds, we want to know about it, we want to do something about it. One of, the, one of the mechanisms we use is a so-called hotline. Uh, hotline, you can do it by, by, by calling. Uh, the number is 1-800-232-5454. Or you can uh, give us on the internet. You, 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 uh, it's uh, www.comptrollertnhotline. Uh, 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 you can make your uh, your information confidential. With you can do it anonymously. Usually, if you want to say who you are, then we can contact you and follow up questions to get more information. Because you know, some it's unfortunately we find cases where we just don't have enough information. If 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 someone says there's something wrong in Davidson County, we can't do anything about it. We but it has. But if you do report, the more specific you are, the better off you are. Uh, you know, it's hard to look at this globally, and we try to. My guess is that the vast majority of public officials are honest and are doing a very good job. Uh, we are getting increased reports, and I don't know whether that's because there's increased fraud or just because people are, are, are more likely to report because we encourage it. And I think it's probably the latter, but I don't know. Justin Wilson's our guest. He's the comptroller of the state of Tennessee. Back to continue our conversation with him after this break.